Okay, so today I uh, just want to share these really, really great colour wheels with you. Now, I am not a technical person at all, and I shy away from anything that's that's got numbers or technical things or anything like that. I just, I my brain just frazzles up and, and, and dies. Um, but I found these colour wheels really, really useful. Now, I bought mine from Amazon, um, and they came in a two-pack, um, which is great, because when I lose one of them, I can, <laughs> I've got another one to find. And, and what's absolutely brilliant is that they've got a different sort of thing on both sides so you can see the two sides here two different sides here the one side that I use the most is this side and it's basically a color wheel so it shows you the complementary and the split complementary and the triadic colors now this is really really useful for when you are trying to find colors that you can either put together um, so if you're branding, if you're if you're creating a business and you want to create your branding, you can find the relationship between um, colours that you're going to be using. Are they going to look great? So if you, um, for instance, want to use yellow in your branding, then a colour to match with yellow that would work really, really well would be sort of like a, um, a violet purple colour. So those two colours... Are going to work incredibly well together now if you are going to be using your color wheel to help with your the relationships with the colors in your color pencil drawings and i'm just going to talk about color pencil drawings because obviously paint and everything like that there's a there's a it's a little bit different in how they mix and everything ultimately it's all it's all the same but i'm going to concentrate on color pencil so um for instance, I, or I used to find it really, really difficult to create the shadows in some of my orangey coloured animals. And if we go through to the orange here, so I'm just going to pull this round. It's a spinny wheel and you can see here it says pure colour on there. So you just spin the wheel um, and pop it onto wherever your pure colour is that you're thinking you know, you're going to be using. So I'm going to use orange, for example, and you can see the uh, relationship with orange, the uh, complementary colour, which is the opposite on the colour wheel, is blue. Um, and so what I normally would do is I would normally sort of talk about using sort of blues and uh, or the complementary colour in, in the shadows. With colour pencil, you've got to be quite careful because orange is very much a yellow-based colour. If you start using blues in with the orange, um, you are very, very likely to get green. Okay, so you've got to be quite careful. It's not, it's not always cut and dried that you use the complementary colour, direct complementary colour in with your sort of shadows. So say I'm drawing a golden retriever and I've got some quite orangey colours in there. Um, and I want to put some shadows in maybe around the ears or maybe sort of like some shadowy areas within the, the muzzle area just to get those little uh, 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 transitions of value in there. If I used blue over the top of my orange, I am absolutely 100% going to get a greeny tinge. Now that could be something that you, you quite like and you want. Um, personally, it's not something that I want. So what I would do is I would look to my complementary color and go, mm, yeah, actually when I think about it, orange and blue, um, I'm gonna get sort of like a bit of a, a, a weird greeny color when I'm using my color pencils because orange is predominantly yellow based. So what I'll do is I'll actually look around the color wheel and I'll go into my split complementary, which on one side is sort of like a blue violet. Um, the other side is blue green or the triadic, which on one side is violet on one side is green. Um, and these, these colors actually will make a far, far better shadow for you than the blue. Okay, my usual go-to would be the blue violet or the violet. So I would be looking at something like a sepia 10%, uh, a, um, a violet brown, an ultramarine violet, something like that, that I'm going to be able to then put in with my orange and I'm going to get a really fabulous um, tonal value in there, the shadows, rather than going with the blue. The green as well, 
works incredibly well it, and it sounds strange that you don't want to mix the two and get green but when you mix green with the orange you don't get green you get sort of like a, a, a brownie color um and that that's what you want to be thinking of when you're thinking about your shadows it, i can remember trying to work out you know a uh, either a chestnut horse or a golden uh, retriever or something like that yellow labrador and i'm thinking oh i need a brown in here i need a brown in here but if you put your brown into the orange you've got to think about how the brown and the orange mix um and and that i think comes with experience when you start to kind of um you know really really think about how your colors mix and everything like that so using a color wheel like this is really really useful uh, i use it in my teaching um, and it's it's just it, it, it's it's a really really brilliant little tool. They're not expensive. And they're they're just a great tool. So on the back, on the back of the um, color wheel, you have these extra really really useful elements. So you have your um, uh, the values here. So you've got value from one, which is one hundred percent black, through to value uh, ten, which is they're calling it white but it's not actually white is it it's showing up as a gray um and that's really really useful to kind of work out what your values and everything are it is a little bit tricky if you're using color um you know to work out how dark or light or anything you need to do so a, a little tip there is actually to um convert your reference photo and your drawing both to black and white and then you can check to see if you need to go darker or lighter in areas usually we need to go darker um, the more value you can get into your um, piece the more dark darks you can get in and light lights the more realistic your piece is going to look and the more contrast it's going to have um, and that is something that many many artists struggle with is getting the values correct me included um, I always start off lighter and then have to kind of get really really brave and, and, and build my values up but it's incredibly important um, and then you've got this bit up at the top here, which is about mixing colour, which mm, I mean, it's it's kind of um, useful. But, you know, with colour pencil, you get a, a slightly different sort of idea idea of mixing. Um, but this is going to give you a little bit of an idea of what will happen if you add colour. So if you've got um, blue, like a blue violety colour and you add red, you're going to get much more of a purpley colour. If you've got sort of like a, a more violet colour, so, you know, the more purpley colour and you add yellow, these are, are complementary colours anyway, you're going to get this sort of bronzy brownie colour in here. Um, if you mix the blue with a red violet, you're going to get more of a sort of a, a, a turquoisey I guess more sort of like a, it's not turquoise is it? it's more like a royal bluey color white with red you're going to get this pinky color um, black with red orange you're going to get this sort of um, you know brownie color but be careful um, black with a uh, red orange isn't so bad if you use a black with the orange it, what it's saying here is you get this sort of brownie color here actually you you it depends on what you can see here if you've got a yellow orange and you add black you're going to get green because black has got like a bit of blue in there and i would i would also suggest that if you have an orange and you're using black this is going in color pencil this is going to be more greeny as well um just because of how the color pencil um is made up basically and then we come round over to here these are the more uh, warmer colors um so if we go to here <clears throat> we add red to red orange you're going to get more of a sort of a that's like, like a geranium lake isn't it this orange to uh, yellow to orange you're going to get more of a sort of a yellowy a yellowy orange um blue to orange you're going to get green um white to yellow you're going to get this sort of creamy color uh black to green you're just going to get sort of like a um you know slightly darker green um the same with the yellow green green and then we go on to like the blue green the blues so it's it's quite it's quite a useful little wheel to kind of work out where you know what would happen if you used a, a, a different color in there these are just your basic colors these are just your um you know red blue yellow green um when it comes to color pencils you've got all sorts of different things in the mix you know i could have a yellow that is um really sort of quite uh, sort of like a greeny yellow or I could have a yellow that is more of a, a uh, an orangey yellow 
or I could have an orange like this or I could have um, an orange like this. So there's so many different um, varieties of the colours, so many different hues of the different colours that um, a lot of the time it's, it takes a little bit of experimenting and practice to work out actually what's going to happen. You can absolutely guarantee that if you put any sort of blue with any sort of yellow, you're going to get any sort of green that's a guarantee um and when you're talking about blacks blacks are usually a little bit blue based you know so you're likely to kind of get a green hue if you put it with anything that's slightly yellow based so those are those are just a um you know a few things to kind of think about there's there's also elements that aren't on this color wheel that will sort of help um tone things down so for me when i'm talking about using an orange um to tone a, 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 an orangey colour down a little bit more. So if you've got something you think, ah, oh, God, that's just a little bit too orange. It's a little bit too yellowy orange. I would I would then aim for using something like a pink. So I've got the pink madder lake here. So I would then introduce a pink madder lake into my orange. And that is just going to tone it down very, very slightly. Um, just to kind of take the edge off it. That's something that I've learned. It's not necessarily on the colour wheel. Um, you can see that actually um you know it's uh, and it isn't sort of like any it hasn't got a, a specific relationship to it it's actually kind of still within that 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 hue range i guess is what you'd call is what you'd call it um you know and and using the pinks in with the oranges works can work really 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 well um you know for me it's just been about experimenting and seeing kind of what what works and and what doesn't um if i'm using black and orange very close together and i put a video out before about using black and orange together i would kind of opt for i put the orange in and then wherever i needed to get the black in that was very close to it or over the top of it i get a little bit of red in um first over the top of the orange so that when I put the black in it doesn't go green so there's all sorts of things to um to think about but this little uh color wheel is really fabulous you've got your tonal values in here you've got the color mixing on the back and then you've got the relationships here between the pure color and the complementary split complementary and the triadic um they're not expensive and I bought mine from uh, Amazon but you can get them from any art shop uh, and it's a really really good addition to your uh, your toolkit